All right, so you can see on the right hand side of that screen, there's this dark area where the LCD has failed. Um, it seems to be getting steadily worse. The car's pretty old, so it's time to take the command unit out. I'm going to strip it down and replace the screen. So here's the command NTG2. It's in the SL class R230, which is what we're working on today, as well as A class 1W169, the B class W245, C class W203, CLK class C209, G class W463, GL class X164, ML class W164, and R class W251. Okay, so to remove these two panels either side, you want to get the seat down as low as you can, get your fingers on the bottom halfway and just pull like this. A little unclip. Work your way to the back here and unclip there. That's why you need to get the seat low so you can get it past. Now the trick here is you want to get this panel and lift it that way. And that's it. And that's how you remove the panel. Okay, you need to take the little covers off your cup holders, they kind of twist off. Just need to clip off like that. You kind of twist them up. This one I haven't got a cup holder this side, so I'm just going to try and lift it off. There you go. This is just a remote I've got for something which is just stuck on there. Huh? That's the other side. The three screws that you need to undo are long screws. They look like this. Okay, it's easy to make a mistake and actually take out one of the other screws, but you'll know you've done it wrong because they're shorter. So you need to remove the long screws. They're all about the same length, or I guess about 30 mil. So now I've got the screws removed. This should then lift up. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna remove it completely because I don't need to. I'm gonna twist it out of the way very carefully. Lift it past the gator. That's why I've got this in the reverse position. And that's all I'm going to do is just twist it round. All right. Now inside here, I've made a little connection there for some uh, additional uh, wiring for my modified um, command unit. But as you can see, there's plenty of space in there to do all sorts of it. Now the next thing you need to do is remove this cup holder. There's two screws either side. Take those out. I've done one. In there. That's it there. And then this now will just pull out. There we go. And there's your cup holder. You can probably buy these on eBay. I think they cost about 80 to 100 pounds. Quite a lot of money, really, for when you think about it. I mean, there's looking at this cup holder, by the way. There's all sorts of things you could probably do. You could remove this. This is just a dummy section and you could have cables coming through. If I wanted to, I could have my USB and my audio all neatly in the front there um, if I so wished. But I've decided to go a little bit more stealth and I've hidden it inside the uh, armrest. Right, so now we've got to this part. The control unit should just pull out. Some people actually say that you need to undo some of the vents up here because there's a couple of screws. And I've found that I can actually just access this without needing to do that. So let's see. There we go. And that's it. There's your control unit. It's going to be here from 10 to oh, I've just turned minutes. it on. So the control unit is connected at the back. This is your. Whoops. Keep turning it on. So at the back here, you've got your fiber optic and you've got your power and you just need to disconnect it. I thoroughly recommend you switching off the ignition before you do so. 
All right, so now you've got the command unit out of the car. It's time to remove the four torque screws. These hold on the front panel. Good idea to use a little cloth or a towel just to stop the front face getting scratched. So with the four screws removed, the front panel folds down here. You can see the four ribbon cables. You need to be very careful here. Start using a little pry tool here. This particular one, lever, uh, you actually push that away from you on that clip there. You push the um, clip in, in this case, towards the back of the video. The, end, the side ones there you lift up. There's a little lever that you can um, just get your tool underneath. This large one here, you push that away from you, similar to the first one, and you can pull the ripple cable out. And this last one, just like the one on the right, you flip up the little lever and that pulls out. So now you can take the command unit away, the left with the basic panel, and you'll see these blue screws, there's 17 of them. They're torque six. Make sure you use the right bit, otherwise you'll chew the ends up. It'll be difficult to get these screws out. All 17 screws, unfortunately, need to be removed, but it doesn't take long if you've got the right tools. Okay, now the last screw is coming out, we should be able to lift the PCB board up, like so. And here you'll see the little rubber buttons. <laughs> and there's a good idea to, you can give these a little clean as well. There's the actual screen itself, and you can just lift that out. Simple as that see the damage there on the right. Been in the car for 16 years, so let's replace it and put a nice new shiny one in. Got this one off eBay, check the part numbers, cost me about £35, or about maybe $45 US dollars. Make sure you remove the uh, protective film because this is now going to be going into the fascia. And once that's centralized, pretty much sorts itself out. Just a comparison there between the old and the new. You can see uh, look pretty much the same. We then reintroduce the PCB, make sure that the rubber buttons are still intact and that the ribbon cables are not being trapped. Get that in place and it's then time to install the 17 screws again torque 6 tool And here's the finished result. Screen in, there's the old one, the damage on the right, and there's the nice new one. All looking good. So now we need to put the four ribbon cables back in. Take your time. We don't want to tear or break any of these cables. Obviously, installation is in reverse to what you remove them. So line up the PCB, push it all the way home. And in this case, on this large one, the connector on this occasion is going to pull towards you. It's going to slide towards you. Just using that tool there just to help it go in. You need to make sure the ribbon cable all the way home. Okay, that's that one in. This one, same, pushes in and pull the catch towards you. And then the last two just clip in and they fold down with the sword ones. Right, so now we've got to put the fascia connected back to the command unit by the four torque screws.
one and all, this probably took me 10 minutes. I did it again probably half the time. It's not that difficult. It's just a bit of confidence. So there's the finished result with the new screen installed. And as a comparison, there's the old screen. You can see how beaten up it looks. Next step is to test on the car. Alrighty, let's turn her on and see what she looks like. Oh, Mercedes-Benz logo comes up. Well, there we go. There we go. How easy was that? I better turn this down. I want a copyright uh, strike on YouTube. But look at that. The screen looks sharper and the colours are more vivid. And bearing in mind, the unit that was on there before was 2004, 16 years old, you know. Um, so this is now nice. I mean, it, it looks it looks like I've actually turned the brightness up. But if I go into, say, the settings and have a look, um, service, sorry, and go into system and uh, display and brightness. I mean, the brightness is sitting where it was before, but I can actually go even brighter now. So I'd say the screen is about twice as bright as it was. And I might even just turn that down a notch just to compensate for the fact that it is so nice and clean looking display brightness. Yeah, look at that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's all good. I guess a good test for it would be to see the uh, DVD. I've got a kid's DVD here. Let's pop her in and see what happens. Video. Well, there we are. There's the Warner Brothers logo. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, obviously, you can't watch films as you go along. That's a whole different subject. But nevertheless, that is looking good. So, um, yeah, all in all, you know, it's it's been a, a straightforward enough thing to do. Um, everything in terms of settings is not going to change because, of course, all of the settings that you have set up are stored on the actual command module, not the screen. So literally plug and play. Um, audio in, by the way, you probably don't have that on some some older cars. I've adapted mine. I've got a little uh, adapter which plugs into where the CD changer used to be. So I have a DAB radio, which is this guy here. So that there then sends a signal wirelessly to up here in the corner, which is my radio uh, up here. This is my receiver, which is the DAB aerial. Okay, and the DAB aerial then connects to the audio input and my audio input is actually inside the armrest so it's nice and clean install obviously I'll put all this back together I haven't done that yet but I've got audio in if I press the six button I go to Bluetooth audio which is crystal clear better than CD quality sound um, in fact if I go into sound I've got different options now I've got speech optimized surround sound um, it's really good it's really clear uh, press it one more time to uh, USB. So I've got a USB again stored inside the armrest. I want to keep this nice and standard so I can play all my USB tracks through that as well. Of course, I can use the steering wheel buttons as I would normally do listening to a CD track. All right, nearly there. Just going to put these two little covers back on where the cup holder is. You just click on. This is a, uh, a remote, by the way, if you're wondering. There we are, all done. So to refit the panel, you need to just do it exactly in reverse as you uninstalled it. So first of all, get the panel and start on the this end here and make sure that the two fingers at the bottom are locked in. There, that's it locked in now. Just check it to make sure. Now you've got this front edge locked in, then line up the clips, push them in, job done. You may find the first time you move this panel it's a little bit stiff, it might not have been removed since the car was made, but that's how you remove the panel. If you'd be kind enough just to like and um, if you put a subscribe to me then I can send you more of these videos and try and help you out and save you money which is what it's all about. Till the next time, thanks very much. Let's move on, cause it's time to move on.